Once all your assets are created, they are ready and waiting for you to use them to build your wireframe. In this video, we will take a look at how to practically use your assets to create a wireframe. The process is super easy and enjoyable. I'd recommend using a grid as a base for your wireframe. It's a good idea to simulate a real-life web design scenario when creating a wireframe. However, if it's a very, very preliminary wireframe, if you want to just uh, you know, get the feeling of the project, you don't absolutely need to use the grid. Let's start with creating the header section. I'll bring over the branding and navigation blocks and position them properly, leaving quite a decent amount of white space uh, on top and bottom. Now let's quickly create a light background for our header. First, I'll group the header elements and initialize the Insert Behind Selection option in the toolbar. Now, when I start creating a rectangle stretching all across the page, you can see that it gets inserted behind the header elements. The last thing to do would be to align everything nicely to the center. Group all of the elements and rename them as header. Now let's add the hero section of the website. Most probably this asset will need some fine tuning. For instance, uh, you might want to expand or contract it. You might want to change the position of the elements and maybe the font size too. The beauty of working with assets in Affinity Designer is that you can easily select elements within groups by double-clicking on them and changing them as you would change regular objects. I'll start the next section by adding another heading and a subheading. Those guys also might need some tweaking, depending on how you created them earlier. They might need their font color to be changed and size adjusted. Maybe you'll want to change the alignment from left to center. They are really flexible. And in fact, if you decide that you might need them in your wireframe assets library, you can just group them and add them to the assets panel. Yes, you can create different assets out of already existing assets. Now let's bring in some featured items. I'll create two rows with four items in each one of them. I'll bring in one featured item and tweak it till it looks just the way I want it. And since I want to have four of them in a row, one item can't exceed three columns of our grid. Once it's created, I will just duplicate it thrice to the right and then all of them once to the bottom. Lastly, I will select all the pieces, group them, and draw a background beneath them using the same technique as with the background for the header. Now I can rename this section and call it something like Featured. 
but you can name it anything that would make this section easily recognizable. The next section we can create could be a uh, from our blog kind of a section. So let's print in the section heading and adjust it a bit. For the blog posts, we can use either the featured items, elements, or blog articles. This is just another proof of how flexible this program is. I mean, we can grab the featured item, make the image go on the left and the text on the right, while preserving it as an asset. I want to have just two blog posts in each row, so one post can't exceed six columns. I also want to have two rows of posts, so we can just clone the top one. Of course, as before, we can now group all these pieces and create a slightly darker background for the block section. You could even experiment with putting light elements on a dark background, but for now I will keep it simple. The last part we'll create is the footer section. Footers usually have a distinct background and are quite big nowadays. They can hold company's logo and tagline, some links, including social media links, Instagram feed extracts, etc. This time I will start with creating a darker background on which I will place the footer elements. On the left side, I will add the image block that would represent the logo. It uh, might need some color adjustment so it is easily visible against the darker background. Beneath it, I will add some text that uh, could be the About Us extract or some additional information. I mean, it is just a wireframe, so we are just testing out the placement of certain elements, not trying to create the final design. I will create a variation of an Instagram feed extract on the right. And uh, I will build it using uh, the image asset that I can resize slightly if I need to. And I will create two rows of images here. Underneath it, I will add another piece of text and a few small image elements representing social media icons.
The last stage would be to group all the footer elements and name the newly created group properly. And there we go, we created our very own wireframe. I wanted to show you the process of building a wireframe out of assets that you can create yourself. Just imagine how intricate your wireframes can be if you just spend some time on designing nicely looking assets. As you get good at creating wireframes, you will add more and more elements to your library and soon you'll have all of the necessary elements to create wireframes with zero to little adjustments needed. But if you don't feel like creating your own wireframe libraries, you can always look for some tools and resources online. They have their limitations, but it's a good idea to know how they work and check uh, if you want to use them in your own web design workflow. And we'll explore them next.